this wake occurred about 5.15 on uh, the 12th, Tuesday, and uh, I was the only one left in the office. Um, it started kind of soft shaking and slowly progressed to what I would estimate about 5.0, and then it stopped altogether, and then it, it, then it continued again, and that's when it got bigger, you know, 7 plus uh, on the Richter scale. Uh, I got in the... I got in the doorway for safety as it was shaking, but there's no way I could have gotten out of the building. It was shaking so hard, I, you know, simply just tried to take cover and protect myself. Um, and then I did it, after it stopped, I did a quick scan of the office to see what had happened. I shut off the water. It was leaking all over the building. And um, everything, basically everything that was standing fell over. Um, and, and then I went out to the conference room and looked over the city. We have a, a beautiful view of the city. It wasn't so beautiful when I looked on Tuesday. It, it, it was a huge like cloud of dust and smoke just kind of coming up over the city. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, and then, of course, there was the screaming, uh, screaming, crying, uh, and ensued throughout the city. A uh, huge, let's see. So there's a lot of screams, a lot of screams of panic. Uh, many many of our neighbors' houses collapsed entirely. Uh, looking right out our window, you know, it looked as if it was about every other house was, had gone had gone down the hill. We we're sitting there talking about how, what our approach is going to be, and I, I started noticing singing. People were singing, praising God, and um, that just really touched me. Very very frustrating because these people are all stranded and there's nobody here to help. There's nothing to do. And there's nothing I can do or anybody can do until they get the right equipment, the right people with the, the experience necessary to take care of things. Uh, I first stepped out of our compound and started walking is when I, I realized quickly, you know, how devastated this place is. Um, almost every house along our street is just totally collapsed or partially collapsed. Everybody was out on the road. People were walking in both directions, carrying all their stuff, carrying wounded. Um, and then there were, there were uh, different pockets of uh, people who were, you know, sitting stranded, but singing and praying together. Um, so the, basically this rubble and uh, broken houses stretched across the road in, in different areas. Um, and I realized that there was going to be no getting our vehicles in and out of the compound and that we'd probably be sleeping at the office that night and for some time. Um, there are hundreds of people walking around, like I said, and um, many, many houses and buildings were completely down. Uh, to my right, the many houses that had fallen down the hill. They're walking on this road and it's downhill on one side and, and uphill on the other. And as I'm getting up to the FCMS office, all the houses on the opposite side of the road had totally collapsed. Um, okay, one of the guys who was laying in the street outside their office had walked over from uh, the Montana, the Hotel Montana, which completely collapsed. Uh, this guy, he was on the fifth floor when it fell and he the roof fell on his head. He had a big gash in the back of his head and blood all up and down himself. And uh, he, were, he was trying to figure out what, it, what his plan is. He was not in a critical uh, point where he needed to be medically evacuated, but needed to get him home, basically. Uh, he was with his brother, or, no, his son-in-law, you know, so, and um, his son-in-law did not make it out. But he kind of was able to climb out a hole and slid down uh, some debris. And we had a, a couple of others that we needed, uh, needed attention, and we were not sure about the, uh, about the quality of the road and, and the way to the Montana from there. We weren't sure if we were going to be able to walk, you know, get a motorcycle or a walk down the Montana road. So. Myself and three uh, Haitian U.S. Embassy workers said, all right, well, or two other guys, I should say, 
we said, all right, we're going to walk down and see if it's clear if we can walk people out that way. And we got no more than, you know, two or three hundred yards, and um, we had this woman came running down and was, she saw that the one Haitian guy, the energy worker with me, was carrying a sledgehammer. This woman ran down and was screaming, you know, please come help me, come help my daughter and stuff. Um, please, my baby, my baby, don't leave me. You have to come look. And we, we didn't know what to do. We were pretty sure we weren't going to be able to help her, but so we had to go try anyway. So myself and the one embassy worker went with her. The other guy went to go check out the road. Uh, as we were walking back up this road, we realized she had come from uh, a, a pretty good distance, you know, another couple hundred yards up the road. We're walking by, and every every ten steps or so, you know, other people are running up and saying, "No, come over here, come over here." People are stuck, you know. We got one person out, but somebody else is stuck, or my daughters, my daughters are are, are missing, you know. They're they're in here. I can hear them talking. I can hear them screaming. And felt so very, very helpless as people were arguing about which way we need to go. But in reality, I knew deep inside that likely weren't going to be able to help any of them. Um, eventually, we kept we kept going. Uh, along the way, uh, we were able to hammer a piece of cement, and a woman was was freed. We got down to where this woman was taking us. And um, it was basically a big maze of rubble. Uh, there's a, lot, a, a huge section, a couple big sections of housing up here by our office that the roofs are all basically shared roofs. They're all connected. And everything was totally down. And there were just probably, you know, within a 30 or 40 yard area. Uh, you know, a dozen people that were stuck, and you know, some people had half their body out with their legs stuck. Some people, you see arms flailing. Um, some people just crying from beneath. This woman, the, the daughter of this woman she was talking about, was an infant, and you could hear her crying. And her sister-in-law stuck down there, and there was, you know, it was obviously a bit dangerous because there's rubble underneath us and. While it was it was pretty secure and solid, there's no telling if there's going to be another aftershock or something. So, and plus, I thought of that there over our heads in certain areas. If we went closer, there would have been other stuff on top of our heads. And you know, it was it was very very difficult to tell these people that there's nothing I can do, and to, to promise them that we'd be coming back uh, with the help that they needed, knowing that. It's going to be a while before things get coordinated and anybody gets up here. Um, now, those people are still there, still stuck, uh, probably in dire need of water and air. And we were waiting for, uh, you know, U.S. military and uh, other special units to, to come up here and do some of that. You know, there's got to be thousands of people missing right around our office. Like I said, I've never felt so helpless in my life making those kinds of decisions. We've been taking a step by step doing more planning and, and, and trying to expedite things as much as we can so that when the real help gets here, that things are set up. Uh, yesterday morning, I went back out and I, you know, I felt like I, I really couldn't do anything. I, I feel so silly sitting in, in this uh, compound, unable to help anybody. You know, they're stressing the importance of hygiene kits now because bodies are piling up. I mean, they're they're being pulled out of people's homes and laid in the street. Um, most of the people who are being carried out are people who are still alive, but. Um, just you know, just at the corner, right outside our office, there got to be six or seven bodies out there. Uh, and then I, I was told on the way down to Delmont from here, there um, I heard somebody getting a warning. You know, there are bodies out there, so just you be aware. <laughs> you're, you're, you've been warned. The plan is to do something. They're just they're just 
sitting out there. Most most of them are covered by a towel or a sheet or something. A lot of them are just still, you can see bodies in the rubble. 